Hi, I'm Jay Jenkins, University of Nebraska Lincoln Extension Educator in Cherry County. And today I want to show you how to calibrate a boomless sprayer. We have an ATV here today that has two boomless nozzles on it. And we'll show you how to calibrate this. Anytime you have more than one nozzle on a sprayer, it's really important that you check the consistency. So when you're doing the equipment check that you should do before you spray anytime, including when you're getting ready to calibrate, um, you should just do a quick check. Um, just catch each nozzle for 10 seconds and measure how much you collect in those 10 seconds. And if it's not within 5% plus or minus, then you probably ought to re-nozzle. Make sure that one of the nozzles isn't clogged or, or something. Once you've completed a equipment check and determine that you don't have any leaks and that everything's working properly, then you're ready to start calibrating. The first thing you need to know is what the distance of your spray width is going to be. Easy way to do that is same time you're doing the equipment check, just to turn the sprayer on for a few seconds on a driveway or pavement pad or something, just enough that the wetted area will start to show up then get a tape measure and just measure that wetted area. Then you know for sure what the width is that you'll be spraying. Once you know how wide your spray width is, then you just do a little math. Take 5,460, divide that by your spray width in feet. 5,460 is an eighth of an acre. So this just makes it so that um, since there's eight pints in a gallon at the end of the calibration you'll be able to easily measure in pints and it'll equate straight to gallons per acre. Once you do that math you'll figure out how many feet you need to drive and you can lay out a course for that many feet. This sprayer has a 14 foot spray width 5,460 divided by 14 is 390. So we'll have to lay out a 390 foot course. It's important that your calibration course be laid out in the same terrain and vegetation cover as where you'll be applying pesticide. It's good if you can spray twice and time yourself each time. Um, drive down, time yourself going down, turn around, spray back, time yourself coming back. Average those two times. Once you've determined how long it takes you to drive the calibration course, you park the equipment, leave it running, and you catch the spray from one of the nozzles for the same length of time that it took you to drive the course. You measure that in pints, and you either collect out of each nozzle for the amount of time that it took you to run the course, or you collect only out of one nozzle, times that by two, and the pint, a number of pints that you end up with is the number of gallons per acre that you're applying. Once you know the gallons per acre, you can then figure out how many acres your spray tank will cover. Once you know how many acres you can cover with a full spray tank, then you can read the label and decide how much pesticide to put in the tank. It's always important while you're reading the label to make sure you know what personal protective equipment's required by the pesticide that you're covering. Um, it's also important when you're calibrating, most often the spray equipment that you're using is gonna be used and it will have sprayed, used, been used to spray pesticides. So you'll need to make sure that you wear the proper pesticide, um, the personal protective equipment then as well. Calibration isn't difficult, you just need to do it.